What's up guys, we're here in a still rainy Page, Arizona, but we're off to explore slot canyons today. Hopefully it's not too messy in there. Let's go to Antelope Canyon. So as of January 1st, it looks like Ken's tour is at Lower Antelope Canyon, which I've done before. It doesn't do photo tours anymore. So we're doing an alternate canyon and I'm actually really excited for that. We're doing Canyon X and yeah, stoked. Let's go. gonna be vlogging on the 5D Mark IV today just for ease purposes so I can focus on shooting photos in the canyon here. At Canyon X there's apparently two separate slot canyons. There's one that's darker, one that has a bit more light. We're going to the darker one first, which should be a lot of fun. Let's go check it out. This is crazy. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like immediately, as soon as you come into the canyon, you're in a slot canyon. Incredible. Canyon is so cool. And the best part about it is there's only three of us, plus the guy, four of us here. When I went and shot Lower Antelope Canyon last year or two years ago, there was like hundreds and hundreds of people. So this is just a totally different experience. And these slot canyons are so cool because I'm literally standing in this spot and I've got four or five compositions without moving my tripod because there's so much to see and so much to shoot. And I'll show you those photos after I'm done talking, but I'll talk quickly about the setup because it's really simple. It's just 16 to 35 and I'm shooting like two seconds at F11 ISO 100 and it's just, yeah, it just comes out so cool in here. Absolutely beautiful. kind of compare this canyon to Lower Antelope Canyon, which I did two years ago. This canyon, um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. It's really photogenic and we have it to ourselves, but it's definitely, definitely smaller. From the end over there to here is like a five minute walk at maximum. So there's definitely less options in terms of composition for your photo. But as I mentioned, you can no longer do a photography tour in Lower Antelope Canyon, you can no longer take a tripod. So that makes this alternative best for photography, in my opinion, and it is still really, really photogenic. In this canyon, in this slot canyon, it's just a constant search for angles and for light. And I talked about this last video or a couple of videos ago, you really have to start seeing through your camera. And if you're having trouble finding a composition somewhere like this or anywhere in the world, throw your camera on live view and just kind of like search through the world in live view. And you'll be amazed how different the world looks through your camera. So that's kind of what I do in these canyons. I throw on live view and I kind of just search for light and I search for compositions because the camera does see dynamic range different, it sees angles different, it has a whole different focal length. So yeah, that's the tip here in Canyon X. And as I mentioned, very different experience to Lower Antelope Canyon for sure. tip coming through here in the slot canyon is I'm shooting ISO 400 and ISO 200 and yeah I can set up a really really long exposure here but ISO 200 and 400 are basically gonna look the same in terms of noise in the canyon and it allows me to take more pictures which is also a great thing. But the main reason I'm doing it is because ISO 200 and 400 pick up more dynamic range than ISO 100. It might be a minimal difference, but it's still a difference. And somewhere like this slot canyon, you want a lot of dynamic range to play with in your edit. Another 
really cool thing about this Canyon X tour is our guide Justin is awesome. We're in here taking pictures and he's got this guitar and the dude can play really, really good and it's just such a good experience in here right now. And actually, I think I'm gonna go see if I can get a photo of him. done at Canyon 1 and we're gonna head to the other canyon which apparently has more light. Personally I like the really dark narrow slot canyons but it should be fun too. Let's go check it out. We're in the second canyon now. It's definitely brighter in here. It's way brighter in here, but it's overcast today and there's negatives and positives to that. The positive is when it's overcast, you get really glowing rock. The color is just really, really accentuated. The downside is you don't have as much contrast. If you come here on a blue sky day, the sunlight comes in and it just bounces off all the walls in the canyon and you get some really, really nice contrast and some really dramatic looking images. Right now it's a little bit too soft a to light so there's almost too much dynamic range, but still having a lot of fun in here. in this canyon is so important. Without a person or something recognizable in the frame, the canyon kind of, it's hard to see how big it is. It's hard to get any sense of scale. So you'll see that a lot of my photos, I'm in the photo or Jody's in the photo, to give it some scale. Another thing is, with that person in the frame, you need some contrast to color. So don't rock up to this canyon wearing orange. Come in green or blue or even like a really white color to really stand out. light hasn't been perfect, a little bit too soft. It has been an awesome, awesome experience here at Canyon X. Totally, totally recommend jumping on this photography tour as an alternate to Lower Antelope Canyon. So yeah, if you want to get your sticks out in Antelope Canyon, even though you don't think you can anymore because Ken's tour is no longer taking photography people, come here. Anyways, getting out of the canyon now and I think I'm going to shoot sunset at Horseshoe Bend tonight. Doing the hike now to Horseshoe Bend. I was planning on coming here at sunrise, but with all these clouds in the sky after that storm, I'm really hoping that this sky kind of just lights up, that I get that exploding sky you're always kind of looking for in photography. For me, the absolute best sky you can get at sunset is if there's like a break in the clouds and then the sun comes under it and you get that underglow in the clouds. And it was looking like that was gonna happen, but it's starting to look now like the wind's picking up and maybe blowing these clouds out of the region. So hopefully they stick around for a little bit longer because this place is all sorts of epic. So this is actually what I was a little bit worried was gonna happen. The clouds disappeared. The forecast was for all these clouds to wipe out around sunset and it's what's happening. Here though, there's still a shot to be made even if there's no clouds in the sky because the sun's gonna set back that way right on the horizon and I think I'll be able to sun star it as soon as it hits the horizon or at least that's the hope. Even with backlight, you can also fix that a little bit with filters. So I've got a four stop medium grad ND on the holding the light in the sky. And then now it's just a matter of waiting until the sun sets. really, really windy. 
there's just like a little wind tornado up here and it's a little bit um feels a little bit sketch on the edge it's not so bad um what i was talking about earlier with hoping the light would go off is happening but the wrong direction look behind us the sky is just crazy and absolutely perfect so a bit of a shame sun's coming down though and i think it's time to try to grab the shot <laughs> So I kind of feel ridiculous. I got my Sunstar photo and I'm happy with it, but I'm here at like the most photographed place in all of the United States, back that way. And I'm shooting opposite of a tiny little bush because that sky is just too incredible. And for a great photo, sometimes all you need is a great sky and anything in your foreground. So tiny little bush, I've got a three stop medium grad ND on and I'm just shooting straight into this. And that is my day done and dusted. A pretty good day of photography here in um, Page, Arizona, even if we almost got blown off the canyon. And I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're headed to Monument Valley. See you there. Peace.